Hello everyone. Thank goodness it's Friday. I cannot remember the last time I was so happy that it is indeed Friday. Usually it means little to nothing to me except that I sleep half an hour later over weekends. But this week I'm counting the hours until four o'clock. Remember the holes in the walls I showed you on the outside of the house? Well, poor Dragon Man's bedroom looked like that on the inside as well. And surely that fine dust could not possibly be healthy. So this week he was kicked out of his bedroom and the walls peeled of old plaster and reinforced and replastered. And you do not want to see the mess. The dust had gotten in everywhere. The cost of the building material and labour had me throw up in my mouth a little. The noise. <sighs> but this afternoon it will all be over. We'll resume the painting next week. First the plaster primer and then the paint. Dragon Man should be able to move back into his room by next week, Wednesday or Friday. <laughs> this was not a joke at all. We'll sand and clean the floors this weekend ourselves and then we'll have to tackle the rest of the house. And Dragon Man is starting his year-end exams on Monday and starting with mathematics. Oh boy. Well, I've survived worse, so I'll just put on my blinkers, look forward, and just carry on. Okay, now I see the Harriness addressed the NATO meeting about Invictus. There are times when I'm speechless, and this is one of those times. I don't know whether I feel like kicking Harry's teeth out or cry for his lost soul or laugh at his stupidity. It reminds me of the time he told his Spotify boss he wanted to interview Putin and the Pope about their childhoods. <laughs> Firstly, Harry does not understand the ways of the world. And secondly, his delusions are a little grandiose, don't you think? What really has me, shall we say, hot under the collar is that once again a royal who is supposed to be politically neutral and, I mean, we can call Harry an ex-royal until we blew in the face. But officially, he's still a royal. He still has his titles and is still fifth in line to the throne. And he still features on the royal website. Having anything to do with NATO is political. Very, very political. And in my opinion, not in any good way either. You know, we often talk about all these acronyms like NATO and WHO and whatever else. And we do not stop to find out what they really stand for, what they are really about. Without me giving my personal interpretation, all one needs to do to know what NATO is about is to read their own website, which reads, NATO's essential and enduring purpose is to safeguard the freedom and security of all its members. It does this through political and military means, ensuring the collective defense of all allies against all threats from all directions. The principle of collective defense, meaning that an attack against one ally is considered an attack against all allies is at the heart of NATO. The outbreak of crisis and conflicts beyond allied borders can jeopardize the national security of NATO member countries. A more dangerous and unpredictable world 
makes things less safe for everyone. As a result, the alliance also contributes to peace and stability, blah, 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 across the globe. Essentially, NATO also helps to defend the territory of its members, but also engages, where possible and when necessary, to project its values further afield. Okay, now you can go read more on their website, but clearly, from their own narrative, NATO is basically a bunch of warmongers who is also prone to poke their noses or then their weapons into places where they do not belong. There are 32 countries who are NATO allies or part of the treaty, and they are in alphabetical order. Albania, Belgium, Bulgaria, Canada, Croatia, Czechia, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Iceland, Italy, Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Montenegro, Netherlands, North Macedonia, Norway, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Slovakia, Slovenia, Spain, Sweden, Turkey, United Kingdom and the United States. Now, have you heard me mention Ukraine? No, I didn't. So why did NATO go poke their noses into Ukraine? And why were they in Insisting on doing manoeuvres on the Ukraine-Russia border two, two and a half years ago to just fuel an already scratching situation? I mean, I'm just innocently asking. The point is that NATO is a very, very political organisation which, in a way, fuels wars, manages and sustains conflict. Why? Well, I guess power and money. I mean, there's a lot of money to be made in the military-industrial complex. No doubt about that. So why get involved as so-called Prince Harry? Why even talk to NATO about the rehabilitation of soldiers when in some instances NATO themselves contributed to those injuries? And why would NATO even be interested in Invictus? Look guys, I understand there are many of you who would not agree with me on this and who may even be NATO supporters. Remember what I said before, I'm from a different world. But you know, it is okay if we differ, each to his or her own. Yet we can still respect each other and still differ in opinion. And even if we do not or may not agree on NATO, the facts are still that Harry is still technically a prince of Great Britain and he has no place involving himself with NATO in any shape or form. In my humble, not so humble opinion, okay, whichever you prefer. Okay, now let's look at Megalodon, the claw of Montecito for a few minutes. So finally a friend or a fan or maybe a staff member had stood up and said that despite the split in their professional paths, the couple's commitment to family remains unwavering. <laughs> You're right. We don't quite believe it, but let's just ignore that and move on. The friend or spokesperson also said that Megan remains dedicated to her brand's success despite all the legal obstacles and that she is focusing on her entrepreneurial goals. He, she, it, even went so far as to say that growing her ARO brand is close to being Megan's top priority at the moment. Again, what? <laughs> Megan is in reality actually facing yet another legal battle 
with regards to American Riviera Orchard. Oh yes, now a trademark dispute has cropped up. Not only has the United States Patent and Trademark Offices rejected her first application because one cannot really trademark the name of a demographic area, but now a protest from a United States based luxury gift company, Harry and David, the owners of Royal Riviera, a trademark for their Oregon grown pears, claim that the American Riviera Orchard name risks consumer confusion and they filed a letter of protest at the USPTO which has since escalated the case to a senior attorney for review. Now look, in my opinion, this is again a fine example of Megan's narcissism and delusions of grandeur. She does not have a single product under her American Riviera Orchard name on her website available to the public yet. So instead of fighting these two strong opposing cases, why doesn't she just rename her brand? I mean, there's an idea. Find an expert and brainstorm something catchy. American Riviera Orchard is anyway so tedious and so pretentious and so long. But no, 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 no. She is the Duchess and must get her way. Just have to get her way because she's royalty and oh, so, so superior. <sighs> anyway, guys, it is Friday. It is very warm after a number of cold and cool days. So I feel all washed out and drowsy. I planted another fruit tree this morning and I have three more to go. But it is too warm to dig holes right now. <laughs> I'll carry on late afternoon. I am busy reading a book on Edgar Casey, and his son said that his father spent his last money on potting soil instead of food. Well, that very nearly describes me as well. So let me get on with my video and chores so my plants can be planted and replanted and hopefully grow and flourish. <laughs> so guys, please take care of yourselves until we meet again on the next one. Bye.